Peggy 7. Oh, hi there. We of the Squid Research Lab have returned to present our latest findings. So, buckle up and keep your tentacles inside the vehicle at all times. It's been two years since that fateful day when the inkling squid species hooked me with its amazing abilities. To shoot ink in humanoid form and to swim through ink in squid form. From these goopy depths, a radical squid culture has emerged. Inklings have developed a taste for combat and competition, not to mention fashion. The ceremonial turf war is one such sport, in which two squid squads of four face off to see which team can cover the most turf with ink. This popular tradition isn't going anywhere, which remains as popular as ranked battle, where the very best teams and players compete online to achieve a higher rank and ultimate bragging rights. Here in Inkopola Square, Inklings prepare for ritualistic face splatting by equipping gear and weaponry. But it's not all doom and gloom. All squid gear is designed for both function and fashion. In fact, everything about Inkopolis lends to its reputation as the foremost happening place in the world. As you can see here, communal aspects of Inkling society are greatly valued. But so is individual expression. Nice shoes! Like other cephalopods, Inklings can even choose their skin and eye color. But unlike regular squids, they have custom hairstyles and legwear too. The various clothing and shoes the squids are wearing is actually called gear and has important roles in these battles too. Both looking good and good abilities are needed to be fashionable. Let's take a look at some gear. It takes more than style to win a turf war. Luckily, the Galleria, over on the left, houses a row of popular gear and weapon shops. Each item you acquire here has one or more abilities that should prove effective in battle. So, let's take a look inside, shall we? This is the headwear shop. Headspace. Got fashion on the brain? So does Flo. From hats to glasses, this sea slug carries it all. Though I must say, she's a bit of an odd one. Inklings like to think of her as their crazy old aunt. Ye Old Cloth Shop is a clothing boutique run by a jellyfish named Jelfonzo. Unlike most jellyfish, he can speak the Inkling language. But it's almost as if he learned to speak Inkling by reading ancient Inkling literature. His strange manner of speaking aside, the young squids of Inkopolis are crazy about his wares. Next up, the shoe shop, Shell Fresh. They have all kinds of footwear here. Sneakers, sandals, boots, you name it. And might I add that Bisque is the least crabby spider crab I've ever met. He's got an air of experience, and he's a pretty chill guy to, uh, well, to boot. Last but not least, let's hit up the weapon shop, Ammo Knights. You may recognize the horseshoe crab who runs the place. Sheldon has a gift for weapon design, and his uncanny ability to blather on about ink weaponry is second to none. Now, I know what you're thinking. If only you could tune out his weapon dissertations with the press of a button. Well, now you can. Sheldon's really outdone himself. I can't wait to study these weapons in greater detail. To start, weapons come in sets of three. A main weapon, a sub-weapon, and a special weapon. Let's examine some main weapons first. Your standard shooters are great for both splatting opponents and inking turf. There are many different types of shooters to choose from. Rollers are adept at inking turf quickly and devastating at close range. They can steamroll opponents while rolling along the ground, or they can fling a wall of ink to keep opponents at bay. Chargers are long-range weapons well suited for sniping distant foes. They have a long and narrow ink trajectory, which is ideal for creating ink lanes that your team can quickly swim through but they're generally pretty slow at inking turf. 
Splatling cannons like chargers have to be charged up before unleashing a torrent of ink. But what a torrent it is! They're slow though, and the long charging time leaves you vulnerable. Sloshers may be a rather unconventional weapon type, but there's no arguing with a full bucket of ink to the face. Blasters shoot out a ball of ink that explodes on impact or in midair. It's great for spotting opponents hiding behind corners. Each weapon and weapon type has its strengths and weaknesses, so you may want to shop around before you settle down. In Splatoon 2, some of the weapons have extra functionality that was not present in the first game. Chargers now let you keep your charge while swimming around in ink. Rollers can be swung vertically to increase your range. And the new dualies let you dodge roll. As you can see, some weapons open up some interesting maneuvers. But what good is R&D without the development part? Introducing the Clash Blaster. It has short range, but its high firing rate and explosive tendencies keep the enemy at bay. Introducing the Flingza Roller. Its horizontal swings are fast, and though its vertical swings take longer, they fling ink further too. Believe it or not, the roller changes shape depending on how you swing it. I wonder if shape-shifting has a special significance to inklings. Introducing the GooTuber. This one is special. It holds a charge for an extremely long time. And as a result, you can move to a better location while powered up and unleash a mighty sneak attack. Ka-chow! Introducing the Dapple Dooleys. Even for a pair of dooleys, these things are incredibly light in weight. That way you spend less time dodge rolling and more time winning. But what about sub-weapons? In addition to spreading ink and attacking, sub-weapons provide other abilities that help with both defense and reconnaissance. Some are really making waves with inklings. For instance, the auto bomb locates and hunts down enemies. The aptly named Toxic Mist can be thrown at enemies, surrounding them in a harmful gas. And that's just the beginning. New sub-weapons are currently in development. A plethora of unexpected tactics are possible when you mix and match your weapon combinations. So try them out and find what works for you. Ah, now for the all-new special weapons. And by all-new, I do mean all of them are new. As veterans know, you have to cover turf to fill up your gauge or no special weapon for you. Additionally, when another player's special gauge is full, their UI icon will glow, giving you more information on which to act. Penta missiles lock onto enemies and fire multiple projectiles. The inkjet enables you to fly through the air and launch explosive globs of ink at the enemy team. The stingray fires high-pressured ink that can somehow shoot through walls. The splashdown clears out enemies by causing an explosion after you dive down to the ground from the air. The ink storm is always making it rain. Ink! The bomb launcher allows you to launch a barrage of bombs onto the battlefield. Ink armor increases the defense of all your allies for a set period of time, completely negating the damage from a single attack, no matter how strong. And finally, the baller puts you in a giant explosive hamster ball that will roll you wherever you want, even up walls. Just imagine the possibilities afforded by each of these special weapons. So far, we've examined inkling gear, weapons, and the strengths and weaknesses inherent to each of them. It's important to choose the right ones to take into battle for the stage and mode you've selected. Speaking of modes, Turf War is just that, a battle for territory. No matter how many times you get splattered, if you eat the most turf, victory is yours. It really pays to cover up enemy ink. It not only adds to your coverage, 
it reduces theirs and restricts their movement around the stage. Inklings will do battle anywhere. City streets, a sports club, an academy, a concert, a racetrack, and so on. Catch my drift? I certainly hope so, because these stages are riddled with hazards, such as this shipyard. Either use them to your advantage or get splatted. It's your move. In addition to turf war, serious squids can experience the thrills of ranked battles. There are three modes that rotate every two hours. Splat zone. Fight for control of the splat zones placed on the stage. The team that maintains control of them longest reigns supreme. Tower control. Fight for control of a tower that moves on rails when you're standing on it. Ride it all the way to the goal in the other team's area to win. The tower will stop at key checkpoints, resulting in fierce battles for possession. Rainmaker. The team that carries the Rainmaker to the goal in the other team's area will be declared the winner. The Rainmaker itself is a weapon that can fire powerful turn shots. Pushing your team forward while protecting the Rainmaker is the key to victory. As you win ranked battles, your rank will increase. This will result in being matched with players of a similar skill level in future ranked battles. This time around, you'll have a separate rank for each mode. Prove you can out-ink the competition, and you may even move up two or more ranks at a time. League battles allow you to form a team with friends, fight alongside them, and battle your way to the top of the charts. You can enlist one other friend to form a pair and be matched with another pair, or connect with three friends to form a four-squid team. League battles play out as rank battles over a two-hour period, or until the stages change. Your score is based on your wins and losses during that period. If you play well, you can receive an in-game medal to commemorate your awesomeness. Now then, oh, well, if it isn't merch, the sea urchin. Talk to this guy and take your gear from fresh to freshest. Depending on the ability, you could reduce your ink consumption or move a bit faster. You see, gear have different kinds of abilities. Some for headwear, some for clothing, and even shoes. Let's see, I have a number of trendy gear abilities listed here. First up, Thermalink. This ability allows you to track distant players that you've hit with your main weapon. The Object Shredder ability increases damage dealt to all non-player targets. Quick Respawn reduces your respawn time if you get splatted repeatedly without splatting anyone yourself. On the flip side, Respawn Punisher increases respawn time and the special gauge spawn penalty for you and any player who splats you. And the drop roller lets you tilt the left stick during the super jump to perform a forward or sideways roll when you land. Want to know what you're up against? Check out the other player's gear on the map screen. Gear abilities present many unique challenges, so it pays to study not only your gear, but the competitions as well. Remember, merch can add or remove gear abilities. Now, for the job everyone's been talking about. I have some new information that I'm happy to share. The job description says it's easy work with good pay. 
work together as a team of four to splat salmonids and collect their power eggs. Apparently, this is the place the tyrant. Looks kind of shady if you ask me. They're not always hiring, though. They're only open when the salmonids are on the move. Let's see. I pulled some strings and got a hold of this manual. It's all about salmonids, which I'm all about studying. It sure helped out back at the lab, especially when studying dangerous boss salmonids. Ah, the steel eel. These salmonids block your path with their long bodies and lay down ink wherever they go. Flyfish use jetpacks to hover while firing squid-seeking missiles. The steelhead. This behemoth fills bombs on its head with toxic ink and then throws them at targets. I'm afraid that's not all. Other undiscovered species of boss salmonids lurk in the depths. Science changes with the tide, and so too does the water level. Stay on guard when fog hits. Salmonids will attack from all sides. As night falls, ferocious salmonids will rush you with incredible speed. Indeed, it certainly is dangerous work. However, special rewards make it more than worth the trouble. Some items can only be earned in Salmon Run. They may open up new possibilities in battles, so why not give it a go? Next, I'll detail a new service in Splatoon 2 that will help you stay in touch with Inkopolis, even when you're not near your console. Say hello to Splatnet 2, a service that puts information such as stage schedules, gear, and stats at your fingertips. In Splatnet 2, you can view detailed results for your last 50 battles and get an in-depth look at the weapons and gear wielded by the players in those battles. You can also look at your win rates for specific modes and stages, helping you to analyze and improve your game. You can also view your lifetime inkage, a feature that shows you how much turf you've inked compared to real-world places. And for you gearheads out there, there's also a separate Splatnet shop that allows you to send gear to Merch in Inkopolis Square. He'll uh, keep it in the back for you. Splatnet 2 will be available to use via a smart device app called Nintendo Switch Online. The Nintendo Switch Online app allows you to invite other players who also have the game to join private battles, league battles, Splatfest battles, and communicate with those players using voice chat. When using voice chat, you'll automatically be split into your in-game teams, so you can talk specifically to teammates. You seem pretty fresh, as Inklings say, so I feel you should be in the know. Check out this equip menu. Here you can set the control sensitivity separately for TV and handheld mode. And there's also a handy sort feature. Feeling artsy? If you submit your fresh drawings here, they might show up in battle stages and in the Compolis Square. You can post to some of your social media sites too. Science truly is Squid's best friend. Next on my list is Amiibo figures. You can save your control settings, gear, and weapon loadout, and nickname to any Splatoon Amiibo. Then you just tap that Amiibo on any Nintendo Switch console to instantly use those settings. What's more, you can also get exclusive gear from Amiibo, or strike a pose and snap a photo with them. Brand new Splatoon 2 series Amiibo will be available. And the original Splatoon series Amiibo figures are compatible as well. Also, food! Inklings love to grab a bite at Krusty Sean's place. Munch down on this stuff, and you'll get more points and money from battles. That reminds me. Here at the Shoal, you can play locally with friends using their own Nintendo Switch consoles. You even get to pick any mode or stage you want. Most players at the Shoal will likely use wireless multiplayer, 
But for more serious competitions, land play is also possible. I almost forgot to mention that the Inkling music scene is flourishing. You can play Squid Beats 2 and time your button presses to the beat. Notice this manhole, or a uh, squid hole in the plaza? It leads to the home of the Octarians, arch nemeses of the Inklings. Venturing here will put your prowess to the test. Stand alone against a multitude of challenges and an army of menacing Octarians. It's also a great place to learn the battle basics. You can take different weapons into battle and master their many uses and nuances in combat situations. What's up with Marie? She looks awfully worried about something. Well, we've seen some fresh weapons, gear, and stages today. But what more can science offer us? How about some content updates? New weapons are in development. Say hello to the Brumma. Much like an Umbra, it offers both beauty and functionality. Press and hold the button to open it up and block enemy attacks. And if you continue holding down the button, you can even do this. Of course, once used, you won't be able to open it for a while, so be careful. Plus, new special weapons are on the way. And of course, new gear too. Fashion is a fickle beast after all. Over time, more stages will become available as well. Over at the lab, we're crazy excited to calculate the many ways this will change the game. Expect weapon, gear, and stage updates for around a year, along with two long years of Splatfests. I guess you could say it'll stay fresh. Ah, uh, but what is a Splatfest anyway? I'm sure some of you know them even better than me. These events split players into two sides and pit them against each other in four-on-four -four matches for a limited time. Each Splatfest has a polarizing theme, leaving players with one option, pick a side, and compete to win in Turf War. May the freshest team win. And for the first time, you can fight alongside your friends on the same team. Before you go, I have this little video for you. I don't know how or why it exists, and yet, here it is. Thanks for watching.